today we have Tripta Singh with us uh, uh, to, on today's session. And um, let me tell you about her a bit. So Tripti is currently the Chief Learning Officer at uh, Centum Learning, a Bharti Group Enterprise. Prior to this, she has been the director of the consultancy firm called Drishtikon Consultants. She is an HR strategist, a leadership development and an OD expert, an executive coach and a career consultant. She has rich blend of academic and industry experience of about 22 years. She has been full-time faculty at academic institutes like IIM Bangalore, IIM Kozikore and Goa Institute of Management. As part of corporate experience, she led HR, OD and leadership development verticals at group level of charge uh, of large conglomerates as Tata Services and Aditya Billa Management Corporation. Gyanudaya Mumbai, she was part of the group HR and led the group's leadership development, OD interventions and leading the culture change initiatives. She has taught corporate executive programs at Law School of Business, Michigan, and has taught executive programs with faculty from Harvard Business School, Rice University, and Accenture Leadership Academy for multiple years. She has also been associate HR consultant for family-owned businesses, developing and designing HR policies and practices for the organization, and has been part of team managing the entire gamut of HR operations for the service organization. Her drive to be connected with young talent drives her to continue serving as a visiting faculty at XLRI Jamshedpur, IIM Amritsar, IIM Rachi, IMT Hyderabad, TAPMI, TAPAI Management Institute, Manipal. She has doctorate qualification in management from XLRI School of Management, Jamshedpur. She is certified trainer for corporate governance by International Forum of Corporate Governance and a certified executive coach. She is certified on several psychometrics and leadership assessment or development tools. She has published about 23 research papers and case studies in international journals and national and international conference proceedings. She has developed and validated a scale psychometric tool to measure spiritual orientation at work. Over to you if you want to add something to it. No, uh, thank you, Pramita. You have uh, given a large background of myself. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I do enjoy uh, different sides. I've been at the different sides of the table so far, right from entrepreneurship to education to uh, corporate sector and also as a, a core HR operation person. So it's an entire gamut of 360 degree approach to understand the subject deeper. Okay, so um, today we are going to talk about the uh, goal settings aspect of performance management. So, um, would you like to like, uh, brief us about the different aspects of goal settings approach? So, when we are talking about goal setting, I mean, um, Every, whether it is an organization or as an individual, we all set goals and we have uh, uh, something to drive us. As individuals, we sometimes feel that, okay, uh, we can flow with the uh, flow, but in organizations, we need to achieve because we have achieved something, we have to be in existence. And that is uh, where uh, goals become more important and very prominent. So uh, when we are talking about goal setting, there are different methods of goal setting, different approaches to goal setting. I mean, it's a whole uh, subject in itself to be taught. Uh, let's uh, take it through the various questions that you uh, that you have. Uh, I can answer those. Okay, so I'll just uh, jump into the questions. Um, so the first one is, um, in your opinion, should goal settings be a collaborative process between managers and employees? If yes, then why? Uh, it is important to have a collaborative process. Goals are set for meeting objectives of the organizations that we should be very clear of. And the employee, employee is the executor of those goals. Now, uh, neither the employee nor the organization can be ignored while setting the goals. Therefore, it is important that both sit together to achieve or drive the goals that are important because organizations do need uh, 
I mean, have you as an employee to achieve those goals, organizational objectives. Otherwise, organization will not exist, and you are uh, also part of the organization to contribute to that goals. It is important to set it together. Neither the manager here is a representative of the organization, and you are representing yourself as an individual. So uh, both are important. Both cannot be ignored, and therefore it cannot be done in isolation of each other. You cannot be setting goals on your own without considering the organizational objectives, understanding the whole gamut of the organization, uh, what is happening, because you might not have the entire perspective. Whereas manager is bringing that perspective into a uh, picture while setting the goals. And you, as an individual and manager, both are working towards me meeting interest of you as an employee and organization as uh, your employer. So, uh, goal setting should be a collaborative process. Yes. Okay. So, um, how important is goal cascading and the need to tie every employee's goals to an organizational objective? And is it always practical and effective? Okay, so first I'll answer the first part of it. And uh, I would begin with asking everyone to first reflect on why our goals cascaded or why one wishes to link the organizational objectives with individual goals or departmental or individual goals. See, certainly organization is trying to achieve some objective uh, that is either written as organization mission, vision uh, is, uh, is stated there. Usually we don't uh, pay as much attention. We are not able to uh, relate the importance of vision and mission, which is uh, in many organizations being put on the walls, but never discussed and talked about. However, those are the goals that organization is setting once, uh, for oneself. The vision that they uh, keep that how they would want to see the organization in the larger uh, perspective, what should be the guiding principle. Mm -hmm. And mission are the goals set, uh, some goals that are set for the organization. Now, for achieving organization goal is apparent reason that we should be cascading the, uh, the goals, the organizational goals into individual goals. However, uh, in addition to the organizational goals, the most important and the more important reason is that each employee have to have the glimpse on how they are contributing to the larger objective or the vision and mission of the organization. It is very important even for the office boys or uh, office personnel support to understand that, understand and feel that they are contributing to the business and the society to their organization, the reason why the organization exists. For example, if you're work, work, working in a telecom industry and the vision of the organization is suppose connecting every relations and that's the objective of, uh, with the vision that the organization is working and for that they have different uh, mission-based goals where they are saying that, okay, we will reach so many geographies, so many people will touch, uh, connect to remote areas and things like that. Shouldn't the office boy or the support also uh, not feel that uh, she or he is contributing towards realizing this vision? It is very important. So cascading of goals, it is uh, important to draw the uh, connect between you, what you are doing as an individual in the organization and how that is connected to the larger vision and mission of the organization. Now, the second part of the uh, organization, whether it is practical to can, yeah, to yeah. can and practical and effective. See, it depends on how you are doing it. Whether it is practical or effective, it depends on how the organization is taking up. Are you uh, going to the details and uh, ma making everything measurable and trying to measure the connect, probably it would be very difficult. However, for I mean for every role, there are roles which can be directly connected and measured, but there are some roles where you may not be able to directly connect or measure. 
so it may seem impractical for such roles however if you are cascading such roles for inspiring people engaging people motivating them it is all practical no matter how much it looks like subjective and not so practical it is very practical if an office boy is able to relate that every day when he is uh, he or she is cleaning the uh, desk of the employees he is enabling those individuals to work in a, a friendly clean environment which is contributing towards meeting organization vision and mission so how you are relating it it depends on that So, uh, moving on to the next question, we have: um, Are sub goals essential to set effective goals for the employees? If mm -hmm. yes, then why? See, uh, when we have to look at the sub goals, I mean, why are sub goals set? Sub goals are set for uh, having different milestones, quicker milestones, where we are able to first uh, of all measure. that whether we are achieving and moving closer and every time with smaller sub goals if we are setting sub goals uh, we also have the reasons to feel um, i mean to celebrate and see our progress so it makes it more visual and also it helps us in understanding that we are moving closer to the final goal also i mean you need sub goals to assess if you are in right direction see why are sub goals set and discussed and uh, when we are talking about uh, performance measurement and things like that they are largely based on sub goals it is important to assess that if, uh, we are we are taking the right path if we have uh, taken a wrong path to reach a destination x uh, we may reach destination y but that doesn't serve our purpose so uh, every sub goals gives us an opportunity to see that we are moving in the right direction we are making progress we are uh, i mean we are getting an op opportunity to improve or change our direction if we are we find ourselves going in the wrong direction so sub goals are very important for achieving large goals or the the goals which cannot be uh, i mean realized immediately which take time to Uh, actually realize so uh, i mean definitely sub goals gives us a reason to celebrate and uh, know that we are in the right direction yeah what um, i want to ask um uh -huh. question regarding this uh, uh -huh. don't you think that if we have a lot of sub goals attached to our like actual goals it becomes a little difficult to focus on those like uh, we do not uh, like we tend to feel a little lost like where to focus on the sub goals or the like actual goals in order to attain the actual strategic goal see it but uh, if you are talking about i mean different the num uh, i mean if you are saying that if we have multiple sub goals and it it may distract us yes are you saying so see sub goals are the uh, goals which are set based on the process that you should follow to achieve the larger goals suppose if you are saying that i mean i'm not taking very large goal i am saying that uh, you have set for your sales team you have set a goal which is of 3 uh, years your organization should achieve uh, say 80% of the market share uh, in the domain of your expertise or the product that you are selling if that is a larger goal that you are setting now if you are setting in various sub goals definitely the targets for each sales person manager that or the geographies that would be divided and various uh, aspects of that would be given as sub goals however at the same time if you are putting up uh, i mean somebody is there who is a uh, i mean sales person for you and that person is achieving the goals not the numbers however if that person is not following the um, the ethical principles that are uh, set for the organization now the larger goal of the organization is definitely that you want to be the um, uh, i mean having 90% of the or 80% of the market share 
but do you want it through unethical means through uh, practices which are not acceptable that needs to be very clear so every goal when we are saying multiple goals you will i mean definitely you cannot say that okay i uh, you measure sub goals too many sub goals where you are saying suppose if you are eating a uh, dosa you are saying uh, putting it on the uh, on the burner is uh, one goal if you are going too detailed then all it is certainly very distracting however the major uh, the major milestones need to be identified otherwise uh, i mean that would keep you focused uh, you would uh, definitely it requires uh, a careful thinking to uh, develop the sub goals and the uh, link to the larger goal thank you so um, uh, the next one is uh, how should zero target goals be measured for performance in an organization Mm -hmm. So, what are the zero target goals? Yeah. So, uh, by zero target goals, I mean the goals that are you know the lesser the better goals, like uh, customer complaints. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you want to reduce the customer complaints to zero? That is what you are saying? Yes, the zero target goals. Okay. So, they are goals. So, like how uh, those goals can be measured? how those goals should be measured yes okay so when you are saying airtel is advertising these days for uh, i mean goals where customer complaints would be zero and then only will realize that we have achieved the um, i mean the objectives of the organization what does it mean that you ignore or you don't uh, create a process where as uh, people can complain then also you can get a zero target goals it means that you are providing all opportunity to customers to complain to uh, to lodge complaints and the services to each of your complaints are heard and solved and as the number go down what you are saying is that now the customer don't uh, are not able to find any reasons for making complaints therefore the uh, complaints number are going down and that is where what all you are doing to reduce the customers reasons to complain that is a zero target goal it is not the number that there are no complaints so it depends on how you are interpreting that zero target goal when you are saying uh, employee grievances i mean again that is a i mean that should be a zero target goal in organization when you are we are talking about employee grievances you have created such a work environment such a culture such processes and practices in organization that employee doesn't find any reason to complain it is all transparent and people are generally happy about whatever work they are given whatever um, remuneration they are getting the kind of managers they are getting the work environment that they are getting so it it should reduce to minimal level i would say that zero target is something which is can be targeted but it is very difficult to achieve because it is uh, something that uh, you are trying to give the best of reasons not uh, for people not to complain however there would always be some or the other complaints now at that point of time you need to see in terms of whether the complaints that are coming are genuine which would help i mean uh, taking that feedback solving that complaint will help us in uh, improve the processes and systems or and uh, satisfy the customers or we are uh, i mean these are complaints which are just out of uh, individuals or customers habit of complaining or habit of uh, like a child complains for any damn uh, Yeah, uh, food uh, that is cooked by a mother to eat, uh, so the child will complain for anything. So uh, it's it's a process. So you need to be uh, very. I mean, definitely, uh, it is not. It's a subjective assessment. It's a subjective assessment, and going to uh, deeper that requires listening, careful listening, listening beyond what is being said. 
Thank you. So, um, last question we have. Should all goals be measurable and how to incorporate measurable parameters to otherwise subjective goals? Okay. See, now when we measure uh, goals or performance of individuals, there are, uh, I mean, process-oriented process and there are uh, target-driven, number-driven uh, or goal-oriented process of assessment. Now, uh, when we are saying that should all goals be measurable, we may not have all goals that are, that could be measurable in the time frame that we want to uh, measure goals. If we have a time frame of one month or uh, one year or two year or three year, uh, there would be some goals which could be measured even in, in a month's, month's time. And there could be some goals which could not be measured even in 10 years. So say for many research, it takes years to realize the main objective and no one knows that what is going on in the process. And it becomes, I mean, uh, setting sub goals in those research kind of uh, this thing, uh, it becomes very difficult because many a times, re research and innovation also, many a times, it is the failure that is teaching you to improve. So you have almost reached, you have tried, you have uh, gone in the, towards almost about to release the vaccine, but then you realize that that is not, uh, I mean, suitable. So you need to improve work differently and maybe you have to uh, start from the scratch. So such goals cannot be uh, measured in that. I mean, the time frame is uh, has to be uh, very clear in mind as to when are you measuring the, that goal. How much time is reasonable for measuring? You cannot be uh, measuring research. Uh, say, I mean, there are research which takes uh, decades to uh, come into uh, fruitful innovation or fruitful output. So no one knows whether it will take a just a month to come up with something innovative or it would take years. So such goals cannot be measured uh, by output. It is measured by the process. Are you following the right process of doing research? Are you putting in efforts to uh, achieve the goals or the, uh, the results that, uh, that you want to achieve? Suppose if you are trying to create a vaccine, what kind of inputs that you are taking, who you are connecting, what kind of research uh, that you are doing, how you are uh, seeing different aspects of or testing that on different uh, things and what are the results, how you are measuring. I mean, so all the process that is set for doing a good research is something that is has to be set. So all, even in organizations, yeah, other, other than research, it is important to understand that some goals, um, some roles are not necessarily measurable in the time frame of your performance measurement cycle. How you are assessing that, it is based on the process that is being followed. And the organization also sets the time limit, okay, we will try for three years. And after that, if nothing comes out, we may change the goal, change the uh, um, objective for that role. So that is also a, a fair measure, but then uh, it all it's a philosophy driven this thing. You might be on the last uh, uh, step to reach your uh, output. And uh, if you become a little uh, edgy and try to give up that goal, you may uh, lo lose the opportunity to achieve that uh, new innovation. At the same time, if you keep on doing it, you may be uh, losing out on the ex expenses that are happening, uh, that are being incurred for doing that research over the years. So that's a subjective, again, a subjective call by the um, management in terms of whether it is prospective uh, to invest. It is uh, something that uh, is, uh, seems to be promising or not. And a lot of it depends on the process being followed. So thank you so much. It was wonderfully summed up. And um, so yeah, we are done with the questions. And, uh, okay. Yeah, I would like to thank you for uh, joining us today in the session. And 
giving your valuable insights on this aspect of goal settings. And Thank you, Pramita. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank mm-hmm. you.